measurement and motion introduction in your daily schedule you go to school you either go by bicycle school bus by foot or in a car with your parents the medium by which you go to school depends on how far the school is from your house if it is nearer to your house you may go by foot or bicycle in case it is too far you prefer school bus or car in the same way you go to school on time the time span of prayer subject classes lunch and school timing is fixed the distance time the quantity of each grocery item vegetable that are bought from the market the quantity of milk you drink every day all are measured in particular units by different measuring instruments the path traced by you during a walk motion of wheel of the bicycle motion of the earth motion of simple pendulum etc all have a unique motion physical quantities think of different things you measure in your daily life you generally measure the length of a line segment time during the day mass of vegetables bought from the market temperature during the day to know how hot or cold it is speed of the car you are traveling in etc quantities like length mass time temperature and speed that can be measured are physical quantities there are seven fundamental physical quantities all other quantities are derived from these fundamental physical quantities physical quantity unit symbol mass kilogram kg length meter m time second s temperature kelvin capital k luminous intensity candela cd electric current ampere capital a amount of substance mole mol measurement the comparison of an unknown quantity with a standard quantity is called measurement the known fixed standard quantity is called unit Every measurement consists of two parts. First part of any measurement is a number and the second part of the measurement is the unit. For example, if the length of a hall in school is 20 meter, then 20 is the number and meter is the unit of measuring length. Long time ago, people used foot, footstep, hand span or arm, cubit to measure length. But these units of measurement are unreliable because they vary from person to person. There was a need for units of measurement which could be uniformly used by everyone. Such a unit is called standard unit. Standard units, a unit of measurement which is internationally accepted as a basic unit of measurement, is called standard unit. Scientists all over the world. have accepted a basic set of units for measuring the basic physical quantities that is measurement of mass length time temperature etc this set of units is called the international system of units it is generally referred as si units according to si units the fundamental unit of length is meter in short form meter is written as m the standard unit of mass is kilogram kg the standard unit of time is second s and the standard unit of temperature is kelvin k but generally thermometer measures temperature in degree celsius or degree fahrenheit multiples and submultiples of units calculations with very large or very small numbers becomes very difficult and therefore impractical hence for convenience multiples of standard units are used to make large measurements fractions or submultiples of standard units are used to make small measurements take a glass of uniform shape and a long thread hold one end of thread at a point on the outer surface of glass with the help of thumb now wrap the thread along the circumference of the glass till the end you fixed its one end hold the wrapped portion of thread from the ends and measure its length on the meter scale the formula of circumference of a circle is applied here to find the radius of the glass 
commonly used units of length mass and time are units multiples sub multiples length 10 mm mm 100 cm cm 1000 m m 1 cm cm 1 m m 1 km km mass 1000 mg mg 1000 g g 100 kg kg 10 quintals 1 g g 1 kg kg 1 quintal 1 metric ton time 60 seconds s 1 minute min 60 minutes min 1 hour h 24 hours h 1 day 365 days 1 year 10 years 1 decade 10 decades 1 century 100 years 10 centuries 1 millennium 1000 years measuring instruments different instruments are used to measure different quantities meter scale is used to measure the length of an object weighing scale is used to measure the mass of an object and stopwatch is used to measure time but it would be very difficult to measure the girth or circumference of a tree using a meter scale for this a measuring tape has to be used similarly ordinary weighing scale used by a vegetable vendor cannot be used to measure the mass of gold silver or diamond jewelry by jewelers for this you need an accurate measuring instrument an ordinary watch cannot accurately measure the time taken by you to cover up 100 meter distance you need a stopwatch to measure that therefore in order to make accurate measurements you must use appropriate instruments proper knowledge about use of these instruments is also necessary how do i measure accurately while measuring it is necessary to take the measurements correctly and accurately we should be careful about a few things some of them are place the scale in contact with the object to be measured the scale should be placed straight it should not be placed in a slanting position the ends of the scale should not be chipped or curved the zero of the scale along with other markings should be clearly visible the position of eyes is very important they should be placed in such a way that they focus straight on the point where the object and the ruler coincide they should not be focused on any of the sides length of a curved line to measure the length of a curved line we mark the beginning point and the end point we also mark few more points on it at random now we measure the distance between the points separately and add them up this gives the total length of the curved line motion you see many things around yourself when you are in class you see students teachers board tables and chairs school bags lights fans etc around you among these only students and teacher can move fans rotate but tables and chairs board lights school bags do not move the objects which do not move are called stationary objects when you are in your school bus you see cars bikes bicycles animals around your bus if you observe these objects move thus these objects are called movable objects these movable objects continuously change their positions with respect to the stationary objects around them this continuous change in the position of an object is called motion furthermore when you play run or walk you are always in motion motion can be mainly of two types uniform motion and non uniform motion if an object covers equal distance in equal intervals of time that is with constant speed then this type of motion is called uniform motion while if an object covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time then this type of motion is called non uniform motion types of motion objects move in various ways 
we can classify motion into certain types translatory motion the motion in which all the particles of a body move uniformly in a linear path is called translatory motion example car moving along a road a ball rolling on the ground a girl sliding down a slope pulling out a drawer of a table firing a bullet from a gun a stone hurled from a catapult etc are some of the examples of translatory motion there are two kinds of translatory motion rectilinear motion when a body moves along a straight line the motion described by the body is called rectilinear motion for example a car moving on a straight road apple falling from a tree a bullet shot from a gun etc curvilinear motion when an object or a body moves along a curved path the motion described by the body is called curvilinear motion for example a stone being thrown into the air a car taking a turn etc circular motion when an object moves around a fixed point in a circular path the motion of the object is called circular motion circular motion is basically of two types rotational motion when an object moves around a fixed point or fixed axis in a way that its position is not changing then this type of circular motion of the object is called rotational motion for example rotation of the earth about its axis rotation of top motion of the blades of a fan etc revolutionary motion when an object moves along a fixed circular path then this type of motion is called revolutionary motion for example motion of the earth around the sun motion of the moon around the earth etc periodic motion a motion which repeats itself after a fixed interval of time is called periodic motion a ball tied to a string at one end and other end is hanged when displaced from its mean position undergoes periodic motion the motion of a clock pendulum or that of a swing is similar the motion of the earth around the sun is periodic therefore it always takes the same time 365 1 by 4 days to complete one revolution around the sun similarly the motion of the moon around the earth and the motion of the hands of a clock is periodic circular motion is an example of periodic motion motion that is not periodic is known as non periodic motion some types of repetitive motion for example swinging of your arms while walking or beating of your heart are repetitive but not periodic this is because the interval of time after which the motion is repeated is not always the same take a bucket full of water drop a stone into the bucket this create disturbance in water level and waves these waves continuously propagates towards the rim of the bucket and disappear at the rim these waves are said to have circular motion oscillatory motion the repetitive motion of an object in which the object moves to and fro from its mean positions is called oscillatory motion in this motion the object passes through its mean position after a fixed interval of time for example motion of a simple pendulum motion of the swing vibrations of a spring etc all oscillatory motion are periodic but all periodic motion are not oscillatory for example motion of the earth around the sun is periodic but not oscillatory simultaneous motion an object can have more than one kind of motion at the same time the earth rotates rotational motion about its axis and at the same time it revolves around the sun in a fixed circular path revolutionary motion the wheels of a bicycle rotate rotational motion and at the same time move forward in a straight translatory motion thus these two types of motion occur simultaneously this type of motion is called simultaneous motion